Now, this, deter this actually describes this model, how you create your reality. Right? Many of you may have heard before that you actually get 11 million pieces of information come through the five senses every single second. And your brain has three main functions, otherwise it's going to go crazy. The first main function that your brain has to do with that information is it deletes. It deletes information. It can't take in everything at once, so it has to delete things that are not relevant. One of the ways that it deletes, for example, is two main ways, is by your values and your beliefs. If you don't believe something is possible, you're going to delete those possibilities out of your mind. How many follow? Right? If something is important to you, if getting clients is not important to you, then you're going to delete opportunities to find clients. How many understand that one? Right? You're standing in the supermarket. It's not that important to you to get a client. You hear someone in front of you say their friend, I'm really struggling with anxiety. You're an anxiety coach. If you don't believe you can influence that client, you're not going to try. There's someone right in front of you. Right? So it deletes. The second thing it likes to do is it generalizes. That means it makes global conclusions about yourself and about life based on one or two experiences of the past. And the way it usually generalizes is when you have about one or two painful experiences, it comes with a big generalized belief about that, about from those painful experiences. For example, how many of you have had the experience where one or two people said to you, sorry, I don't have any money, I can't afford it, and then you came up with this big belief that my prices must be too expensive. Who's ever had that before? Right? So you might have had that, or you might have had, you know, you've tried one or two things, social media in your past, to try to get leads, and it hasn't worked. And then you've made a generalized limiting belief about yourself, I can't use computers, or I'm shit with tech. Who's ever had that? <laughs> Right? I had two hands. I couldn't even turn one on. Right? So that's how it generalizes. And the third main function that your brain does is it distorts. That just means it makes up meaning about experiences. Right? And every time, every moment of your life, you're either making up disempowering meanings or empowering meanings. But you're going to get challenges. And when you leave here, you're going to be tested. How many of you have already been tested quite a bit already this year? I think we've all been tested more than ever before. Right? So you're going to decide your problems are only going to, bigger, going to get bigger. They're not going away. But you're going to decide who the fuck's going to show up. Is it going to be the little bitch inside of me or the little crybaby or the little person that's just going to shrink? Or is the real boss or the real king or the real queen or the real man or woman or who the fuck I really am going to step up? Business is not an easy game. It's a spiritual game. Spiritual meaning that you're forced to deal with things that are unknown. Right? That's the, what happens. You know, we all have an identity right? And this identity is everybody on this Zoom, right, has a comfortable temperature with what you are comfortable earning in your business or what you tolerate earning in your business. You all have an identity which is a comfortable temperature of what you would tolerate earning in your business. Do you want, who wants to know what their, what their mind tolerates, what their subconscious tolerates? Who would like to find, figure out what that is? <laughs> Do you know what it is? It's what you're earning right now. That's what you tolerate, <laughs> right? And we tell ourselves, I'm in such a shitty financial p position, I'm in a bad place financially, and, you know, that's, you know, oh, it's so hard, it's so bad. You spend so much time whinging about your situation, you never find any way to solve it, right? Which you could if you look for it. But you get what you tolerate, and no one earns a dollar more than what they must earn. That's your identity. It, yeah. What's tied to the identity as well is what you subconsciously believe you're worthy of receiving in your business as well. Right? That's part of the temperature. The temperature is what you tolerate earning. It's what you subconsciously believe you're worthy of receiving in your business and asking for in your business. You don't ask for any more than what you believe you should earn in your, in your business. How many follow? Right? This is exactly what you should ask. So, so why the fuck am I tolerating this? You should write that down. Why the fuck am I tolerating this? This is not good. Right? And if you're not happy there, some of you may be, but if you're not, then it's time to do what? Raise my standards. Now, how do you transform your identity? If your identity is that I'm just a broke coach or I'm a struggler or money's hard to get, I don't know what the stories you repeat in your mind, but it keeps on coming into your world because you make decisions from your identity. That's the problem. 
The problem is you make your decisions based on your identity and a lot of your identity is come from your history. So you look to your past and go, holy shit, I haven't done that much in my past. I haven't got that many clients or I've got zero clients. And then so, or there's very little money in my business and therefore you like my identity is that I'm just starting out or I'm a broke coach or I'm a struggler. I'm a procrastinator or, I, or whatever the stories you tell in your mind, it's keeping you there and it comes from your history. So you can't keep repeating that pattern anymore, that tape recorder. You want to make new decisions, you need a new identity. So what's going to be your new identity? You've got to decide for yourself. Is it going to be, I'm a world-class coach or I'm a boss or I'm a fucking savage, right? Or I'm a million-dollar coach or I'm a millionaire, right? Or I'm a freaking business tycoon right? Or an empire builder. I don't know. But you need something strong to move you emotionally because your decisions are being made in your identity. Your behaviors are always consistent with that, right? So one of my identities is, it doesn't have to be yours, but one of mine is I'm a hard worker, <laughs> right? I don't know. Like I pick that up and I work hard and I actually get fulfillment and I feel good about myself when I put in laser focus and I give my personal best. Who feels good about themselves when they give their personal best? All right, the next thing that's got to happen for many of you is you've got to start saying no to more things and more people that are asking you to do, st do stuff for them. You've got to start saying no more. And you've got to start thinking about who you're hanging around, right? And for some of us, we're not hanging around, for many of us, we're not hanging around people that are living the life that we want. And so we've got people in our corner giving us little whispers, telling us we're crazy because when we work or when we put time in our business, they tell us that we should slow down or that we should do less or whatever. But you can do whatever you want, but your decisions should be based on your values, not somebody else's. How many follow? I don't mind. If you're sitting here and you only want to give 10 hours a week in your business and that's your values, you should honor that, right? But you should not honor somebody else's. It's a formula for unhappiness. And if there's a saying that Jim Rohn said that if, 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 you don't, if, you don't, if you don't stick to your own values or your own plans, you're going to fall into somebody else's plans. And what have other people got planned for you? Not much. Not much. Right? I have a friend that started hanging around a lot, a lot recently. He's got the biggest property company in the country. His business does $100 million a year. He did my programs. He did two of them, the coaching courses. He went from $3 million to $100 million within a two-year period. It's crazy. He went from 10 employees to 150. That's what's possible. Because you know what he got right? He got his marketing right. It was crazy. I was like, how'd you do it? He goes, I got my marketing 100%. Spending like 13, 15 grand a day on advertising. Started with organic, got it good. And then he went to that. I'm like, holy shit. So what is the level of a conversation with someone that's earning $100 million a year? What do you think that's going to do for you? 100%. You should seek these people out. You should seek out. I always shut up and listen whenever he's got something to say. I don't, have, I, just, I don't know anything. I say, show me. Show me spreadsheets of his company. I'm like, holy fuck. That's ridiculous. I thought I was doing all right. This guy's killing. So you've got to find, peop find people that are living the life you want. So if you're doing these things and you know what your values are, that means looking at what your values are and you know that you've got a strong identity, a new identity, you're going to start changing your focus, right? And that focus with using your physiology in a certain way is going to give you an emotional state, right? So when most people, why do they have the life they don't want? Because of what? Are they focusing on what they do want or are they focusing on what they don't want? What are they focusing on? What they don't want, right? You are where you are right now because of your focus.